Hey guys, what's up? Carlson SK here, and welcome to my first ever Iron Man guide on old school RuneScape. For this guide, I'm going to be showing you a really important food item that is better than sharks, is equivalent to manta rays and dark crabs, is super easy to obtain, and only has a few level requirements. And that, of course, is the tuna potato. The only actual requirements to this method is to have 68 cooking so you have access to tuna potatoes. You can boost for this, you can do this at 63. However, I would not do this. Definitely get 68 cooking. You also need 35 fishing to catch tunas themselves, and then you need 20 farming to grow sweet corn. For this method, I'm going to recommend that you have Cook's Assistant done and at least three Recipe for Disaster mini quests done. You can do this with one, but it's going to be super slow. If you have six done, you're in the absolute perfect position to do this method. Some additional recommendations that I have are to have 100% Hesidious Favor as this is going to prevent your crops from dying if you grow them at the Hesidious Patch and it will allow you to actually cook food at a higher rate without burning them in the Hesidious Kitchen. Additionally, try to have the easy Arduin Diaries done so you have access to the Monastery Teleport which gives you quick access to a Spirit Tree and quick access to a Fairy Ring. Obviously with that recommendation, I would recommend that you have fairy rings unlocked by doing fairy tale part 2 up until you unlock the rings, meaning you do not actually need any of the skills required to do the quest, and have grand tree done so you have access to the spirit trees. Also, it'd be very nice to have fremenic trials done as well as the easy fremenic diaries. The final recommendation that I have is to have access to super compost or ultra compost. You can gain super compost super easy by buying pineapples from the gnome stronghold using them on a compost bin waiting 90 minutes and then collecting it to get ultra compost you need to complete bone voyage do the exact same process of super compost but you need to put 50 volcanic ash in the bin once it's completed to get ultra compost and this will increase your yields of sweet corn tremendously for the first part of this method you're going to want your sweet corn seeds as well as the best compost you have access to i sadly don't have any more sweet corn seeds go ahead and make your way to the most convenient allotment to you Two allotments that I recommend is first the Hasidious allotment that is the best one you can do this at and then two the farming guild allotment because of convenience to a fairy ring. I grew my corn at the farming guild because I do actually have a farming contract for it however like I said definitely do it at the Hasidious patch if you have access to it. The reason why you're going to want to grow your corn for the first step is because this is going to take the longest time out of all the things to obtain and because you can obtain the other items while this is growing. For the next step of this method, make sure to bring a little bit of money with you and make your way to the Colomancer's chest. With the completion of Recipe for Disaster mini quest, you gain access to the Colomancer chest, which allows you to buy food and a few other items as well. From this chest, you're going to want to buy bowls as well as pats of butter. If you only have one Recipe for Disaster mini quest done, you are going to have to hop quite a few worlds and this will take you a while. If you have three, it's not going to be that bad. You will have to hop a bit, but you can get it pretty fast. And if you have six like me, you only need to hop a few times. Once you have your desired amount of items, you can move on to the next step, and that is to buy potatoes. By the way, just so you know, you are going to need the same amount of each item for this. You can obtain potatoes in a series of ways, but the best way is to actually buy them from shops. I'm going to show you the best shop to buy them from, and then the shop that you have earliest access to to buy them from. If you have access to spirit trees like me, go ahead and use your arty cloak to come to this spirit tree, or simply walk to Verrock and use that spirit tree to make your way over to the gnome stronghold. If you don't have access to spirit trees, you will sadly have to walk all the way over here, which might take a while, but it will be worth it. Make your way to the second level of the tree and immediately head west to come over here to talk to Hudo. Simply trade Hudo and you'll be able to buy 10 potatoes per world. You can do this at any combat level, need no requirements at all, and there is a bank directly south of here, so it's very easy to buy a large amount of potatoes rather fast. Here is the bank, by the way. For the best method of obtaining potatoes, you can go ahead and make your way to Relica. To get there, I highly recommend using Fremenic Sea Boots if you have them, a fairy ring, and use the code DKS to actually teleport relatively close, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Or you can teleport to Camelot and just run your way up there. Otherwise, you will have to make your way all the way over here as well, which once again could be rather tedious. If you're using fairy rings like I am to head over to DKS, simply jump over this fence and you'll have access to the village pretty fast. Once you've made it to Relica, head all the way west over to Sigmund, the merchant. Once you've located Sigmund, talk to him, and you can buy potatoes here as well, once again in quantities of 10. After you've purchased them, you can head over to Pier the Seer, deposit the items, and directly send them to your bank. It's super easy, but you will require an easy tier of the Fremenic Diaries, which I sadly do not have access to. To gain access to this method, you will have to complete Fremenic Trials, so this does have quite a few requirements behind it as well, behind just the diary. So using Relica and this method will be really helpful once you have the Easy Diaries completed as well as Fremenic Trials like me. 
However, because I do not have the Fremenich Easy Diaries done, I will be sticking to the Gnome Stronghold method. Once you have the same amount of potatoes that you do of pats of butter and bowls, go ahead and start baking these potatoes on a range. For convenient purposes, I will be using the Lumbridge range. However, the best place to do this would be in Berthorpe and the Rogue's Den. Get to baking. Once you've baked all your potatoes, go ahead and bake your money because you will not be needing that for now. Grab 14 baked potatoes and 14 pats of butter and apply the butter to the potatoes to get potatoes with butter. I really just overcomplicated that. Once you have all your potatoes with butter, go ahead and grab your harpoon as well as your anger outfit if you have it for some reason, and get ready to go catch some tuna. The best place to go ahead and catch your tuna would be the fishing guild if you have 68 fishing because it does give you an invisible plus 7 boost, but because I do not have that, and most of you guys probably don't, make your way to Catherby. If you have 45 magic, you can go ahead and teleport there. This part of the method could take a while, so in advance, I highly recommend catching a lot of tuna. Once you have your desired amount of tuna, start cooking them. I highly recommend doing this at the Road Stand once again, or if you have access to the Asidious Kitchen, do it there. You will need 100% Asidious Favor, however, it does allow you to burn your food a lot less. This also goes hand in hand with the ability to grow your corn. Once you have finished cooking all your tuna, it is time to go harvest our corn. It should be done by now if you have a large quantity of these items to obtain. If not, though, you might just have to wait a little bit. Time to get that nice farming XP. By the way, you can note your corn on the leprechaun as well. Once you've harvested all your sweet corn, go ahead and cook these as well. I highly recommend that you get a lot of sweet corn seeds in advance. You can get these from master farmers or you can get them from other methods. I don't really know the most efficient one. I would use master farmers personally, but you do you. Also, whenever you do herb runs, make sure to grow corn so you can have a large quantity of these in the bank whenever you want to make these tuna potatoes as well. It'd be pretty convenient and you wouldn't have to wait for your harvesting. And that is the final step. Now you just have to do the assembly. Grab a knife, your sweet corn, and your bowls, and simply use the sweet corn on the bowls. Next, grab your tuna, and use your tuna on the sweet corn bowls to make tuna and corn. You do not need a knife for this step, by the way. The final step of this process is to take the potatoes with butter. Once again, you do not need a knife for this, and use the potato with butter on the tuna and corn to make the final item, the tuna potato the big heel. Let's repeat this process until you're out of ingredients and you now have possibly one of the best heels to ever obtain on an Iron Man at a very early stage and probably throughout the entire game. Pros to taking part in this method. You get possibly one of the best foods in the game healing two more than a shark and being equivalent to a dark crab and a manta ray. You get cooking, fishing, and farming XP in the process. Each potato made makes 309.5 cooking XP and that is the accumulation of cooking the potato, putting the butter on the potato, cooking the tuna, and then combining it all together. You can do this virtually at any combat level, and that includes level 3 skillers, because all you need is farming, cooking, and fishing levels. However, if you were to do this on a level 3 account, or an account that doesn't have any of the Recipe for Disaster mini quest done, you wouldn't have access to the Colomancer chest, and it would be kind of hard to do, but it would still be doable. Nice voice crack, by the way, Carlson. And then lastly, it only requires 68 cooking opposed to other foods. Sharks require level 80, monkfish require level 62, and can be burnt. Meanwhile, tuna potatoes cannot be burnt at all. The only thing that can be burnt in this process is the tuna, the potatoes, and the sweet corn, but if you have a decently high cooking level, obviously level 68, chances of you burning these are very, very slim, especially at the Asidious Kitchen. The cons of taking part in this method. If you don't have the fishing and or farming level to take part in this, you, you simply just can't do it. It could take a really long time to obtain the ingredients required for this method if you don't have Recipe for Disaster done, or if you have only one mini quest done. You could simply get 30 cooking, 65 fishing, and complete type 1 at trio, and get access to Karam Wands, which heal 18 HP. You have to wait for sweet corn patches to grow. However, you're getting farming XP in the process, so it's not really that bad of a thing. Other than that, I see really no cons to this. Anyways, that was my guide on how to obtain tuna potatoes on an Iron Man account. Tuna potatoes really aren't helpful on a main. You can buy them from the GE, so whoop de doo However, it's really helpful on an Iron Man. Hopefully you guys found this method and this guide very helpful to you and your Iron Man account. As I stated earlier, this is my first Iron Man guide on this channel. I have many more that I plan on making in the future as I am just now getting into this Iron Man account. I will be streaming my account every day on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash carlsonsk. I do 6 hour plus streams nearly every day unless I have some homework at school to do. 
Anyways, make sure to subscribe, comment, and like. I hope you guys really did find this guide helpful and are looking forward to my future guides, videos, and streams, like I said, at Twitch. I hope that every single one of you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.